On day 11, we will be leaving Amman, Jordan, the Grand Millennium Hotel, and driving over to Madaba. Madaba will see the mosaic floor, and then we'll drive over to Mount Nebo, and then from there we'll head down to the Dead Sea to our hotel we'll be staying in for the next two days. This is the view out our window that morning, and we find out we've been staying in 9-11. Wow. And this is breakfast. After breakfast, we gather in the lobby with our luggage and head on to the bus. We're going to be leaving for good as we drive out of Iman. The population of Jordan is 8 million people and 4 million of those, half the population, live in Amman. Houses all over here are like in Israel. They're ready for new construction on top. Maybe a new family adding an extra story. There are beautiful mosques everywhere and in almost any kind of shape and form. As we head to Madaba, we pass through Moab. And this little town is kind of important. Israel fought to battle here when they were making the entrance into the Holy Land. Well, this is the capital of Shihan, the Moabite. And in numbers, Joshua fought here, and this is the hill he had his palace on. And now we arrive in Madaba and take a look at the mosaic of the King's Highway. Imada will be our tourist police for the day. They're there basically to keep everybody civil around the tourist. As we walk to the church, we'll discuss this area a little bit. Several times, Madaba is mentioned in the Bible. In fact, both Joshua and David fought here and eventually conquered it. During Byzantine times, it was a major Christian center with dozens of church and its own bishop. Soon we're arriving at the Greek Orthodox Church of St. George. We'll be going next door to the Visitor Center first. We have come to see the 6th century mosaic map on the floor. And here's a picture of what it looks like with the Sinai Desert, the Dead Sea, the Jordan River, Jerusalem, and Jordan. In this enlargement of Jerusalem, we can see several places we visited. The Cardo, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, Damascus Gate, the Nia Church, and notice there's no Temple Mount. There's much more detail than we can possibly go into right now. The church it was in was destroyed during the Muslim invasion and not really found again until 1884. It had been damaged severely by construction over the top of it, not knowing it was there. The current church was built in 1896 and is beautiful inside with mosaics and paintings and icons. Since this is an Orthodox Church, it has an iconoclast, and this is it. The priest would be behind here doing communion, and then he would bring it to the window to serve the people. Let's look around some at the decorations here.
I am so glad you came to visit me in Jordan. I do not get up much and all I am allowed to do is just hang out here in this church in Madabag. The mosaic on the floor here is supposed to be something special, but I never get to see it since it is on the other side of my post that I hang on. I hear you are going to climb Mount Nebo and take a look at what Moses saw when he was in this area. I hope that it will be a clear day. I hear you can see all the way across Israel on a clear day, but I would not know since I never get down off this wall. Well have a good drive to the Dead Sea. I hear the Crown Plaza Hotel is something to behold, especially its swimming pool. Well have a good night's sleep you have a long hot date tomorrow heading down to Petra. Only this much of the mosaic still exists, less than half. And it covers the light areas you see here on this map. And here it is. Not very easy to see. But if we up the contrast a little bit, you can see it much easier. Again, normal. And up the contrast. Normal. And up the contrast. This is not the only mosaic floor in town. Like this Hepastolis Hall and others are here, but we don't have time to look at them. It's time to head up. It's not a very long distance from Madaba to Mount Nebo. God told Moses to provide water for the people by speaking to the rock, but he struck it. And God said, you will not enter the promised land, but I'll let you go up on a high peak, the highest peak in the land, and I'll let you look over into it. This is the route we'll take through this site. After Moses stood on top of the mountain, he then died and was buried. Mount Nebo is 2,330 feet above sea level. That makes it almost 4,000 feet above the surface of the Dead Sea right now. As we walk up, we see the Millennium Monument with Moses' face and profile. Faces come out of the side of the Bible throughout history. And if you look at it from the front, it looks like pages of the Bible. The original 4th century church here was built to remember the death of Moses. And here's another large eumastic lizard. This one's about a foot and a half long, count the tail. At the museum are various mosaic floors from churches around the area. The museum is rather small, but it does a good job of telling the story of Mount Nebo and the surrounding churches and monasteries. In the 4th and 5th century, there were many churches and monasteries in this area besides Mount Nebo. This site was pretty well destroyed, and in 1933, this is what it looked like in the first field day. It had monasteries surrounding the basic church, as you can see here, and much work has been done digging here. It is finally restored to this level, but then they ran out of rocks since they had been taken. Now you can see as you look at the church, there's the modern upper section and the lower section of where they restored to with the original rocks. This church just reopened in 2016 after significant renovations. And now let's take a look north over the northern part of Jordan. And now let's walk eastward and look westward over Israel. It's extremely hazy in that direction now, but there's the Dead Sea. And over there is Jericho, the dark patch.
On the eastern end is a brazen serpent monument to remind us that God told Moses to put a serpent on a pole so people could be healed. And later on, in John 3.14, Jesus talked about this and his being raised up on a cross. Now it's time to head into the church. You can see the old and the new here. And you can see the mosaic floors that it was built of from the ancient churches. Let's just take a look around. Around the outside of the church was a monastery that was built in the 6th century and had many rooms for the monks to live in. It looks like it's going to be hotter today than yesterday. And now it's time to eat lunch at the Nebo restaurant. When we arrive, they're cooking fresh bread on the rounded plate over a fire the ancient way. After eating lunch, it's time to go across the street to the Tree of Life Mosaic Workshop. This is a project by the Queen for handicapped people. Let's listen to how they do mosaics. It's still like they do in, in the ancient times. After we Choose an image, we bring a flat board, cover it with white cloth, then we copy the image on the cloth. So, but when we bring these stones from the mountains, we don't bring them like these shapes. We bring them as a huge ox stones. And we have downstairs cut machine to cut big pieces of stones to these shapes to be very easy for us to use it and to cut. Then, by clippers, by special clippers for the stones, we cut these stones to small pieces, to a tiny little pieces of stones, picked up by a tweezer, but a little bit of the glue that we stick in them on the cloth. My friends, the glue that we use it to stick stones on the cloth, you know what is this? It's water and wheat flour. Why we use water and wheat flour as it is? Before to give it the answer, what I need from you, my friends, just try to touch this piece of mosaic, please. Try to touch it. You will see how it's rough, is it? It is beautiful, but it's smooth or rough. Uh -uh, don't forget, touch it by it. Don't touch it. Touch it, don't it. Touch it. Why is that? Why is it rough? It rocks. It rocks, yes. It rocks. It's 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 because this is the bad side of the piece. Oh. 
And our work is upside down work. But why is that? Why our work is an upside down work? Makes sense. So we are working as an upside down work because when we end, when we finish, when we accomplish our work, we need mosaic piece which is so is very smooth. So when we end our work, we just bring the frame like this, then we fill the frame with cement, with white cement. Then we take the piece of mosaic and flip it over to cement. So this part, which is the back side, it will be inlaid by cement. Then we wait a period of time to make sure that all of these stones sit on cement 100%. And what we do, we use hot water. We use very hot water for two reasons. The first reason for the usage of hot water to dissolve and to melt the glue. The second reason for the usage of hot water for peeling the cloth. The last step, we take it and we put it outside for a few days to dry and to stick the stones with cement and to be like this. And this is a briefing about the steps and about the techniques of how we make a beautiful piece of this. Since it's so close to a holiday, there's only a few working right now, but usually there are a dozen or more. And they earn a living. They had to spend four years at the Institute just to learn how to do this. And now time for a little shopping and bringing one of those mosaics home. Any of those chunks of rock that are left over, they're ground up and made of paste and paint ostrich eggs with it. And now it's time to head down to the Dead Sea in our hotel for the next two nights. Along the way you should note that this area is a wilderness area and extremely dry and hot and not a very good place to live. The Jordanian Plateau is 1400 feet above sea level. So now we're descending down to 1600 feet below sea level where there's water, you can grow crops, and date palms. As we get lower into the valley, we start to see Bedouin camps. Finally, we're driving along the Dead Sea itself, heading to our hotel. We'll be staying at the Crown Plaza Hotel for the rest of our time here. It has a huge swimming pool out back, although to tell the truth, we won't use it any. And this is our view from the balcony as we look out over the Dead Sea. As the sun's getting ready to set, it's time for us settle into our room and then to walk past the swimming pool over to get something to eat. When we get back to our room the sun is set and the lights are starting to come on over in Israel as we end day 11. 